Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome to a special episode of Sort of Factorio. What we're going to be doing today is tier listing all the items in every single tab of the game, of Factorio Space Age. So we're doing it by tab because doing it all in one video would be too much. So each tab is going to get its own video. The space tab is a little bit light on just the number of things in it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to combine the space tab with ranking the planet orders as well. So the the six different ways, you know, like do you go Vulcanus, Gleba, Fogora or that sort of thing. So we'll rank that in the same video as space. And we're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, we just kind of whipped this up with chat, the grading criteria. Um, so let me explain what that is. And I also just want to start by saying, these are the absolute objectively correct uh, rankings and any disagreement will be met with, um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is very subjective. And this is obviously, uh, a lot based on my opinion. I, I'm excited to see chat uh, arguing with me and complaining about my uh, my hot takes, but that's part of the fun of it. That's why we're doing tier listing, right? It's, it's meant to be a little bit um, uh, argumentative almost. That's, that's what's kind of fun about it. So definitely leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know your hot takes. You know, the, the things that I put in F tier that you think are S tier, that sort of thing. Um, if you're interested in doing this yourself, I these are public tier lists. I'll put links to them in the uh, description of the video. And yeah, we should probably put logistics tab somewhere. I wish it showed the title like up here, but it doesn't. Can I make another? Uh, ah. I don't know what, how to do that too easily other than just we, we know it's logistics tab. We can see that the items are there. It'll be in the title of the video, so people watching it know this. Um, too ill to argue very much. Oh no, Alor. Sorry to hear that. I actually am potentially getting sick myself. I hope I hope it turns around, but... Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're just going to get started here and see how this goes. I'm sure as we get into further tabs, we'll be a little bit more experienced on how to rank these, but... Um, I don't know if I want to do like, you know, same types of items together or not. I feel like it makes some amount of sense, at least when there's things that are this close together to do them together. So let's let's start with my favorite, the passive provider chest. Uh, also, this is I meant to mention this earlier. Everything by default will go into C tier unless I have a reason like I need to have a reason to move it either up or down from there. C is the default. If it does what it needs to do, you have no complaints, but you also have no special praises for it. It gets C tier. All right. So that's that's kind of the baseline for everything is a C. Um, D means it's kind of bad for some reasons. F means it's really bad for some reasons and vice versa for the higher tiers. And things only get S if they're really, really, really freaking special. Um, but yeah, the grading criteria, I do want to talk through those real quick. Basically, ah, uh, basically by width, depth and time of usefulness, what we mean here is the width of usefulness is how many situations or even quite literally locations in your factory are you using this thing? So like a yellow belt is used literally everywhere. So it's a very wide use. Depth of use is more like how many different ways can you use it? So something like a power pole does not have a lot of depth of use. It's it either provides power or you can connect it to, um, you know, the logistics wires. That's about it. That's all it does. There's not much beyond that. Um, it just carries power and carries signals. So depth of use is kind of how almost how many different ways you can use it. And then time is for how long in your playthrough is it useful? And, and that matters. Rush factor, it's kind of self-explanatory. Like how much do you want to rush for that item in the tech tree? How much does it influence your planet decisions if it's something that comes from a specific planet, that sort of thing. Cost effectiveness, is it worth it in terms of both researching to get there and the item itself? Quality effects, when you you know have rare, uncommon, legendary, how, use, how much more useful does it get? So something like a pipe is pretty low on that list because <laughs> 
health doesn't really matter. I know, yes, you can make an argument for certain things where health matters, like a wall in particular, but for most things, health is completely irrelevant. Um, Cause no, you might say, well, it's all useful having more health on your space platform, but like asteroids shouldn't be hitting your space platform in the first place. So it's not really that relevant. And then unique factors to the item, obviously certain items can do things that no other items can, so each item is going to have a bit of uniqueness. Uh, graphics, how does it look? Do we like the way it looks? And then the, just the vibe check, you know, this is a subjective tier listing. So let's, uh, let's dive in and we're going to do passive provider chest. So I, I, let's start with all these. I'm going to down buffer chests a grade just because I never use them. I have no need for them. I'm, I'm considering F for buffer chest, um, which is funny because I know a lot of people are obsessed with them, but I find if you're doing a global bot network, buffer chests are basically useless. And the only time you would use them is if you needed the lag time of a bot delivery to be smaller for something because the bots are gonna have to carry it to the buffer chest and then from the buffer chest to the other thing. So buffer chests actually create inefficiencies in your network. It actually means more bots need to touch the item for a longer period of time. And you would really only use it to deliver things to like a spider tron or a player that was restocking, you know, after a long journey somewhere else or whatever. They definitely have their uses. I can see what they are but uh, they definitely don't belong in a high grade for me. Uh, requester chest, I'm gonna move up to B tier cause it's such, it's such a great feeling when you get a requester chest, just on vibes alone. I love those bad boys. Um, these three are probably C tier. They do what they need to do. They're all useful. You need storage for storing things. The active provider chests, you know, are just a passive, but they say, hey, get rid of my stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. I think I think that's a decent start for those chests. All right, let's uh, let's just go down the order here. Arithmetic combinator, huh? So a combinator. You were expecting requester chest S tier. No, no, no. I'm not going to give out the S's that easily. Not that easily. I do love the bot network, though. Maybe logistics bots will get S tier. We'll see. So arithmetic combinators certainly have This one's interesting because their usefulness in terms of depth is like, you know, S, S, S tier, right? They're one of the deepest, like the combinators in general are probably the deepest system in the whole game in terms of what you can do with them. They're Turing complete, right? You can literally make a computer with them. But other than that, like how much do you actually use them in game? And that's very player dependent. Um, Particularly now that Decider, I'm gonna put Decider, I'm just kind of ballparking for now. I'm gonna put Deciders quite a bit higher just to start because now that you can do multiple conditions and they're, they're just so much easier to use now because it's telling you the signal that's currently being input. I feel like Decider Combinators are, are potentially pushing up towards A or S. The new ones are just amazing. The ease of use is way up. The, you know, quality effects really low. Cost effectiveness, they're cheap. Um, I think the vibe check alone for, I mean, let's be honest, vibe check, despite being at the bottom of my criteria, is kind of the most important one. <laughs> and I think designer combinators are way up there. Um, yeah, they're way up there. I don't know if they're S though, but they're so, they're so nice. It's so easy to do logic now. And then particularly with the whole belt reading, it's also really easy to do sushi type things and whatnot. The selectors, I can see their usefulness, but I don't need their usefulness. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock it down to D. I didn't use a single one in my entire playthrough. They're important for the, for the very specific cases where they are important, but beyond that, they don't have much of a value in the average player's base. And the arithmetic combinator, I think is fine at C. It does what it needs to do. You don't need it very often just because, because of the new decider combinators being so powerful. I think these are less necessary than they used to be, but they're still useful if you're trying to multiply something or I needed some for my Gambletron. So I think they'll, I think they'll stay at C. Yeah, you can, you can play the game without any logic items completely for sure. 
What about the static one? Oh, uh, constant combinator. Where is that bad boy? Uh, I think it gets a C as well. It does what it needs to do. You need it for certain things. They can use logistics groups now, so they're they're nice in that sense. Um, but I don't think I used. Did I use a single constant combinator in my entire Space Age playthrough? I don't think I did. They're really useful. Maybe I I think I used one or two. I remember using some for testing things and for examples, but I don't remember if I actually like used them in a real build. And then while we're on this topic, ugh. I know I probably shouldn't put it in the F, but I just hate how invisible these look when you put an icon on them. I actually think for graphics, uh, these get an F for me. The icon needs, the icon that it displays on its little screen is smaller than an alt mode icon over a steel chest. And that just feels completely backwards to me. Um, so it really, I really didn't. Now these are good for messages if you like to leave yourself messages or multiplayer, but I wasn't playing multiplayer and I'm not grading based on multiplayer. If you want to grade based on multiplayer, you make your own tier list. So yeah, I think those are just F, uh, total fail. I didn't use them more than once or twice. I only use them because I didn't have task list and I wanted to write some things down. <laughs> That's the only reason I used it. Uh, okay, what's next? I saw iron chest. Iron chests. All right, so we've got, let's pull out the three, the three main chests here. Iron, wooden, and steel. So I think wooden chests get an F because you literally don't need them. Um, it's just in case you don't have it, but at only eight iron plates, an iron chest is just strictly better. I guess they're useful if you want to limit the number of stacks without having to click to limit the number of stacks or something, but more or less wooden chests, totally unnecessary. The game could delete them and it would still be a fine game. Um, yeah, come at me. Uh, steel chests, once, <sighs> this is interesting. It's also interesting because quality affects chests now, which is a very recent change that I really didn't play with at all. But it kind of means that like a higher quality iron chest. I mean, it's not going to be cheaper than a steel chest still, though, because steel is pretty cheap once you have foundries going and stuff. Hmm. I, I guess what I'm trying to figure out right now is do either of these d deserve to be moved up? From a I think from a usefulness perspective, yes. I think that the the amount of uses that a chest has, right? Whether, especially like on Gleba, where you're wanting to pull out the most spoiled things, um, the amount, I mean, in terms of the usefulness, like width, depth, and time that we talked about, right? Uh, the steel chest is like an S for that. So I do think they deserve to be pulled up a grade. They are kind of boring though. It is just a chest. So I don't think it deserves to go any higher than B. But it, it certainly is an important an important uh, item in the game and has a ton of usefulness. All right, what's next? These things? Um, let's see. Let's see if we can decipher which ones are which. I think the overgrowth is the one with the extra roots, right? <laughs> uh, so these are the Gleba soils. And I personally... <sighs> hmm... Interesting. I, I mean, I kind of want to drag them down and I'm not sure why. I'm trying to figure out why I'm feeling that way. Why do we want to drag these down? Because like they just exist so that you can make more plants. And once you it's just almost a, a, a tedium wall is kind of what I'm trying to get at. Like once you've automated them, you don't need them in huge amounts. You can still only over... I, I think I wish you could place these anywhere on Gleba. Having to put them in specific biomes still is a mechanic that feels a bit weird to restrict a player's factory, even in the ultra late game, um, in terms of where you build it. Like, you, you have to rely on your map generation to give you the right amount of green and pink uh, soil. But that's more a complaint about kind of the biome mechanic in the first place rather than 
anything else. But I feel like once you get to these, you should be able to place them anywhere on Gleba. Um, so for that, I am going to judge them down to the D category. And these are fine. They do what they need to do. No complaints. I, should they exist at all in the game is a different question. I think Gleba would be fine if they didn't exist. And just all of the green patches started at greenness. Um, it's just another thing to automate and a reason to use seeds, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a ton of hate for it, but I don't have love for it either. Yeah, I think Gleba would mostly function the same without the soils, if the biomes just already worked. And I don't know. Conditional building equals less flexibility equals lower tier. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think these being D tier works for me. These are fine. I don't have huge complaints about them. Artillery. It's interesting the artillery wagon is here. It's not a military because um, it's a train. But let's go with inserters. So we'll start with the burner inserter. Where is that bad boy? Here he is. Burner inserter, hot take, F tier, trash. You don't need it. No, no, maybe not. But I know people are going to argue with me on this one because lots of people always question me when i use when i use uh yellow inserters for my steam engines at the beginning of the game people are like oh my gosh power spirals brownouts and while that's true the only way that you really spiral is like if the inserters are inserting at a rate what am i trying to say like a yellow inserter it depends on the mod pack you're playing is maybe the best way I'll start because if the inserter is going at full speed to keep the, the boiler fed, then if you're down to 80% power and the inserter is then at only 80% speed and then the boiler can't keep up, that is a problem. But that problem tends to not exist because of the stack upgrades and in vanilla, an inserter is already way more than fast enough to keep a boiler fed with regular coal. So even if you're at like 50% power, a yellow inserter can keep up with a boiler going at full blast. So there's really no need, like unless you're having a brownout, uh, you know, that's almost a blackout at that point. And at that point, like, yeah, your inserters are going to stop working, but you can just go drop a few coal in the boilers yourself. So it really doesn't, I've never, even when I've lost power in my base, I've never regretted ignoring burner inserters. <laughs> Um, one thing I do want to note, did someone mention this in the chat yet? Uh, Aquilo. I believe on Aquilo, you can use burner inserters and they don't need to be warmed up. No one mentioned that in chat, but that is true. So on Aquilo alone, burner inserters could have a couple use cases that they wouldn't normally have. That being said, I still hate them in their F tier and they can... They can go burn for all I care. Uh, yellow inserter. Yellow inserter is the workhorse of the early game. The usefulness is is huge. There's no rush factor to it really because you can kind of craft them from just having copper and iron in your inventory. Um, well, yeah, I think they deserve C tier. I, I think yellow inserters are solidly C tier. Like they're, they're they do what they need to do, you know? Again, remember, C is the default. Unless I have a reason I am going to bump it up. A lot of things are going to end up in the C tier. <laughs> now use, it is cute when burner inserters feed themselves. So fast inserters, I actually think I'm going to move up to B tier because you can get them pretty early in, in terms of rush factor. You don't have to live with yellow inserters for very long and the blue inserters are so much faster and they allow you to often only need one inserter per building whereas there are a few cases even in the early game where you're using multiple yellow inserters and they're kind of slow and annoying and then the blue inserters come and save your butt and then you get the stack size two upgrade and you're like ah yes blue inserters can do everything so i think they they deserve to go up to b tier i also really like that blue color Apparently all the blue things are here in the in the B tier. B for blue. Look, it's just, it's faded. Um, we'll just put all the blue things in the B tier. <laughs> I'm curious how that's going to hold up for the rest of the time. All right, what about long inserters? Okay, here's where Crydax's hot takes are coming in. Are long inserters S tier or are they F tier? 
What do you guys, where do you guys think I'm going to put them? It's going to be one of the two. Um, so I actually, I believe long inserters, and, and this is completely biased opinion, are not a good mechanic. And I like the Bob's inserters option that lets you make any inserter long. Now, as for all the rest of the Bob's inserters options, we're not talking about those right now. Like imagine the only thing the mod did is it took your inserter and it made the drop point and the pickup point one tile further out. And you can't do the three tiles and you can't do the angles and you can't do anything. If that's the only thing it did, I think that would be a better mechanic for core factorial. Like, do we really need to have a separate entity just for the concept of long inserting? And the fact that it's slower restricts a lot of design rather than encourages more design, in my opinion. Like, I think you would have better flexibility if you could have your your stack and long or stack and bulk inserters be longified. Um, Particular, yeah, exactly. Long inserters being slower encourages not using them, which encourages weird builds. And it, it just, it feels like an artificial scarcity type thing where it's like, why am I being restricted in this way? Um, you're giving me the option to do a long handed movement of an item, but you're restricting it to being pretty dang slow. And so it f f conceptually, um, I'm putting these in a, in an F tier because this is me taking a stand for the 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 Bob's longifying of inserters. In terms of their actual usefulness, they do deserve to be higher than F tier. But this this is me making a point. We're taking a stand. And yeah, Alor, that's yeah. There's a. Uh, I mean, you and the devs, obviously, like the devs have said said as much about <laughs> long inserters. So I, this is this is me putting it there for hot take, uh, hot take sake, because I think my actual grade is probably a D. I don't use them in most spaces. I kind of only use them where I need to. They they are a last resort in Vanilla Factorio, and I don't like that they're a last resort. So they get an F because that bothers me. All right, uh, on to bulk and stack inserters. Uh, these two guys are pretty awesome. <sighs> I love the new stacking mechanic, like a lot. So these are gonna be somewhere up here. The bulk inserter is kind of like the blue inserter. It just, once you have it, I use it everywhere. I don't, it just completely takes over and I never use the yellows or blues again. So I think it goes in B tier for the same reason the blue inserter goes in B tier. Um, <laughs> paid for by Big Bob's. Yeah, yeah, Bob, Bob's paid me for that message. Um, but the stack inserter, oh, it's gonna get A tier. I love belt stacking. I think the way that they did belt stacking is top notch and the stack inserter makes that possible. I also like it, it can get in your way a couple times, but I like the way that they don't swing the arm until the, the pickup is totally full. I actually think that's cool. I don't like that you cannot restrict the, the number that they pick up before they swing to be exactly the number you want it to be. Cause what, cause 16 works out nicely once you get to a stack size of four, but there was a hot second where I had stack size of three on my belts and I wanted these things to pick up 15 instead of 16 because then they would do exactly five stacks of three per swing. Um, so it felt weird that I couldn't change that. N Aylor, I can't remember exactly what it was. If it might, I remember it wasn't possible. Something was weird and it wasn't possible. Are you sure you can? Maybe it was, maybe they changed it? I mean, there's video evidence of me running into this issue at some point on Gleba specifically. It was once, it was right after I started switching, shipping Gleba Science home, I researched the stacking, I made some of these bad boys, and I wasn't able to change it so that it, it was only picking up enough for the multiple of three. 
something something happened there and it it's possible it was user error <laughs> i i'm definitely leaving room for that but something happened and i wasn't able to change it um so i wonder if they they patched that in or if i missed something or if i'm just misremembering the whole situation anyway i love the the stack inserters they're they're obviously a plus at the end of the game um so that's pretty great any more inserters no that's it okay belts let's let's do belts ooh ooh belts hmm so yellow belts yellow belts are interesting so dave i didn't put them low remember c is def default i what i so i i'd like to let's let's try to think about everything being at c level is i didn't bump them up is is what you're thinking and i did i, I bumped this up to b tier we can revisit it. i don't know i th i think it's reasonable but anyway so belts belts interesting because part of me feels like the yellow belt deserves to go up to s tier just because just because he's the king you know but at the same time, <laughs> the yellow belt sucks and you just try to get rid of it as soon as possible because you need more than, you know, seven and a half items per lane per second. So it's also funny because there's a lot of my brain that's like thinking about modded playthroughs and like my Pyanodons hours and you live with yellow belts for 10 years on Pyanodons, um, but not the case in Vanilla Factorio. So I think a yellow belt it's crappy. You get rid of it as soon as you can. You move to you move to red belts as soon as you can. So, so I think I think yellow belts get knocked down a peg for that. And red belts are the workhorse. You need them all over the place. I think red belts they last a long time. And as soon as you get belt stacking, you can keep using red belts for a long time. You really don't need anything faster than red for quite a while. And if you use belt stacking, that's even more true. Not to mention, all of the belts have a huge amount of usefulness and cost effectiveness and all that. The, but blues and greens get a lot more expensive. So I think blues are not very cost effective. You know, you only get 50% more items and they're way more expensive. Um, so I think they go down to D tier as well. And you guys are, yeah, in chat saying that you can even skip them. Which is interesting. I kind of did that too in some ways. I believe I built blue belts, but I didn't use them in a lot of places on my novice base. And I did a lot of replacing red with green on my novice base. So yeah, uh, the green belts. I mean, they're awesome. Vibe check, they, they get an A. They're, they're awesome, stuff goes fast. Uh, we'll put the undergrounds with the individual belts because I don't I don't see a reason to split that particular thing up the splitters do I no splitters need their own their own grading just because of splitters being unique but undergrounds are fine to go with their belt and yeah the foundries being you know in terms of cost effectiveness the greens aren't that expensive because you can make the blue belts and the green belts in foundries so it makes them so much cheaper in terms of iron. Not to mention you're already printing iron for free on, on Vulcanus. So, though, I don't know. Ooh, there's a part of me that wants to knock these down a peg again because they can only be made on Vulcanus. And I really didn't like that. I would prefer that they can be only made in foundries, but as long as you have foundries, you can make them anywhere. So the fact that they can only be made on Vulcanus is kind of a knock on them. I don't like that. And the rocket capacity is low. Is it? Is it lower than the other belts? Hmm. But yeah, I, I think green belts deserve an A grade. And it's the green color. So, you know, continuing with that trend. Um, <laughs> okay, let's think about splitters now. So... Splitters, in terms of use, depth of usefulness, it's massive. You can do so much with them. Between the priority input and output and the filtering of the output, I mean, they're just incredible. 
Splitters are awesome since they upgraded them. So I think the splitters deserve to be a grade higher than their respective belt, which would put this at S tier, which is an interesting, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to commit to that yet. Um, rocket capacity of green belts is only 50. Interesting. I didn't notice that. That is interesting. I don't, I don't think it knocks it down a grade, but I didn't, I didn't actually notice that at all. <laughs> Does this deserve to be S tier? I mean, splitters are so awesome. You can do logic with them. You can do timers with them. Yeah, yeah. Not that you need to. You can make sushi belts with them. Splitters are great. You know what? There is there is one knock to them though. They're not perfect. You can't connect a wire to them. That that is a bummer. If you could connect a wire to them, they would fulfill all my dreams and my dreams would come true, but Without that, I don't know if they deserve S tier. Hmm. Nah, they deserve S tier. Splitters are great. I love splitters. I use them all over the place. I use them a lot to pull even just one one row of something off combined with undergrounds. You know, you turn the underground sideways so it only pulls off one lane, that sort of thing. So, so I it gets S tier. All right, all right. Big power pole. Big power pole. The quality effect of a big power pole is one that's worth noting. With all of these, quality either does nothing, like for the belts, or it does something that's just like standard for quality. Like quality just makes inserters go faster. It's not like some crazy bonus that you absolutely need. Um, but the quality effect on big power poles is interesting because it affects what, what's the word i'm using what's the word i'm trying to find basically the ratio between each one is so much better for big power poles than it is for the other power poles because it just adds one to every single um radius of power aura that's the word i'm looking for yeah just the the radius at which it provides power is increased by one for every step and then legendary goes up by two i also agree with you alor i don't like that i think the big poles should actually not get a radius bonus and should get a bigger distance bonus so they can just go crazy far and the substations should get a bigger radius bonus than just one radius i think the other two working the way they work is fine the, the medium and the wooden but yeah, uh, wooden power poles get a D just because you replace them as soon as you can. They they just they might even get an F too. I think they're down there with burners for me where it's like I only use it if I have to. As soon as I can automate the mediums, I'm using those bad boys. They're the workhorse. Um, but yeah, I think big power poles get a C. You know, they they do what they need to do. You. uh Big power poles takes a hit now that your base is split among planets. That's also true. You don't need them as often because you don't need distant bases on each planet as often. I guess that's sort of true. I don't, I don't really know if that changes it. It's more just like the, there are less situations where you need it on the other planets because your base is often one chunk. There's no reason to spread out on the other planets for the most part. Uh, Fulgora is a bit of a a bit of a difference but like on Vulcanus the only reason you spread out is to go get ore patches and that's the place where you might use these but substations where are those bad boys at there they are substations I love them I think they get a B as well super useful they're easy to use they're they're not that expensive for what they do compared to compared to other things do you rush them I don't know if I rush them because the red circuits are usually pretty expensive at the time that you can first get them. So I don't I don't usually like automate them and and only build with them ASAP and they're 2 by 2. So their their usefulness doesn't ever like they're never strictly better than medium poles because of the 2 by 2 nature. So I I don't know if I can I can bump it up to an A because of that. Because there are a lot of places where you can't fit them. And the quality effects 
keep medium power poles, I think, in the running, right? Because a, a high quality medium pole is insane. Like it's almost a substation by itself. So I actually think medium poles stay in the running with substations because they're only one by one. And like a legendary medium pole is almost a substation. Obviously a legendary substation is even crazier, but that's still two by two. So I think I think a B rating for those is, is pretty fair. All right, all right, moving on. Construction bots. I think I think the bots get S tier. You know, Dave, you were you were questioning me about about the chests. I don't think the chests get S tier because the chests are just there to hold the items. That's not that interesting. Nor I don't know. It's the bots that that are the real the real workhorse. You know, of the bot network. And being able to build stuff remotely with construction bots is such a big mechanic that like if it if we didn't have this mechanic, the game wouldn't even feel like the game, right? This is this is a game defining mechanic right here. So construction bots got to get S tier for that and logistics bots kind of the same argument like without logistics bots, you literally can't do half the stuff you end up doing in your factory. Now, there are plenty of bot free runs, particularly before Space Age. I think that's harder now because of the way that the the rocket launching works and the way that you can't automate rocket launching based on loading stuff with inserters. You kind of need bots now. I actually don't like how they've done that. There's my hot take. I think there should be a way to automated launch rockets. Um, I, yeah, I think there should be more settings in the rocket silo in terms of launching it automated. I think there should be more ways you could load things with inserters and program it to launch to a specific platform only or to launch to any platform or it just it doesn't it just doesn't work right. Um, but logistics bots are incredible nonetheless, and you kind of need them for rockets now. Yes, Aylor, you can load rockets with inserters, but what you can't do is have it launch when full uh, unless they change, unless they added that back in in one of the recent patches. Oh, it will launch itself when full. Sorry, the issue isn't that. The issue is that you can't tell it to only launch on a circuit signal. That's the issue. Um, the issue is that it does launch when full and you can't change that. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Um, there is one little knock on logistics bots, which is that it's kind of trivial to use them. I, I think in certain ways, it could be interesting. I don't know. There are certain restrictive mechanics that could actually make bots more interesting. Because uh, they can get kind of boring, you know, when you're just pasting down requester chests and provider chests everywhere and let the bots do the work. But at the same time, I love them and I think they're really necessary. So S tier for both bots. All right, the car. The car. This one's interesting. It heavily depends on how much uh, military you're doing, but I think it gets a D. It's really not necessary. And in a lot of playthroughs, on Novus, you're getting stuck on cliffs and trees anyway. You can dodge those better. It's gotten better with the new map generation. It is easier to drive a car around. Um, I don't think your bases are big enough to need a car in the early game. And by the time you need to get around faster, you can get higher quality exoskeletons and higher quality power armors and all that. So I just, I don't think cars I don't think cars even deserve a C for me. They're useful to kill a biter base or two, but I, I don't know. Whatever. The tank. Yeah, let's do all the vehicles. The tank gets an A. Yeah, where? Mech suit must be in military. That's why it's not here. Um, the tank gets an A, and f that's because it has a grid now. So the tank is insanely good for your military stuff and it's kind of all i use for biters mid game um and you can remotely drive it now too yeah i didn't even need that but you can do that now which is crazy um so the tank is a plus um 
it's not s but it is a plus uh really useful i even used it to kill you know my first demolishers um it's very powerful the cannon shells are really powerful you can put exoskeletons in it so it can actually go fast now i think that's probably the biggest difference is the speed at which you can drive it is way better now the tank previously was just so slow it was kind of painful and i remember before before the tank had legs i would even just ignore using the tank and just walk on my own two legs because it was so much faster because i could use exoskeletons and the tank couldn't now a lot of mods fixed this by giving the tank a grid and having engines as like vehicle exoskeletons and i thought that was a good middle ground I do think it's weird that we have exoskeletons in tanks, but whatever, it's fine. Spider-Tron, this one's weird. In terms of the usefulness, it's pretty high. It can be used in a lot of ways. You can do construction Spider-Trons, you can do combat Spider-Trons, you know, you can do repair bot Spider-Trons. Um, so in that sense, it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. Cost effectiveness. Kind of hard to make. Quality is a great impact on it. The unique factors are pretty high for Spider-Trons, having the Spider-Tron remote. Uh, I think these two should probably go together. Um, the graphics are awesome. The vibe check is awesome. That all being said, I didn't make a single Spider-Tron on my playthrough. So it really, it's not that necessary. And they're unlocked quite late. Although you unlock them a little bit early if you go to Glaber earlier, but I I think I think with the vibe check and their usefulness, like if you're mega basing, you almost always build little armies of Spidertrons on the planets to be like your construction crew. If you don't have a global bot network, you need Spidertrons to build stuff. I guess you could do a train construction network, but that's a lot harder. So I I think I think they get to A tier for me, despite not building one in my playthrough. I think I think I give Spider Trons an A. They have their own accessibility option. Wait, what is that? Yes, and remote Spider Tron has vision, so you can you can remote drive a Spider Tron around. <laughs> it certainly does not pass the vibe check for arachnophobics. That is true. But. All right. What's next? Artillery wagon? Hmm. I mean, artillery is cool. Putting it on a train is cool. It does exactly what you'd expect. I never use them, though. So it's going to get a C or D for me. I, I, never, I never use them. I don't need them. You can just... Like... You can easily paste down turrets, actual artillery turrets, and not need them to be on a mobile train. That Like, a mobile artillery turret is just so, like, fringe niche use compared to so many other military options. It's cool, but I don't, I don't think it, it does anything that you really need that you can't do other ways. All right. So that leads us to trains. Hmm. I think trains get an S. Uh, wagons get bumped down a tier though. So trains get an S because trains are just so freaking cool. You guys know this. And I really like building train networks despite the fact that I skip it sometimes. The reason I skip it is just because it's not really necessary. Uh, we were talking about this uh, on the on the Cardania Discord just yesterday. Like, why didn't I build a train network in my playthrough? And it's like, well, I didn't need to. Like you have stacking on green belts, so you can get 240 items a second on a single belt now. There's just, and bots are already pretty strong and quality just makes them even stronger. And and trains, despite being awesome, they're not that much better than belts over even medium distances, like a distance of like four or 500 um, tiles. Like, why not use a belt still? It's kind of expensive to make a 400 length belt, but once it starts running to move, because the only thing you're using, you know, trains for in the early to mid game is moving ore. Yes, you can build a city block type base and you absolutely need trains for that, but that's a 
that's not a necessary design decision and I wasn't building a city block type base and so I didn't really need to move other items around on trains for any reason. So all that being said, trains are still S tier because it's awesome, but you don't need them. And the reason I knocked down cargo wagons is because quality doesn't make them bigger. And I find that a very odd design decision that they they gave you a stack size of four plus a new belt tier for space age so you go from 45 a second to 240 a second the bots didn't get any upgrades which also felt weird in terms of their cargo capacity or having a second tier of logistics bot they only get better battery which helps but that's it and the and the cargo wagons didn't get anything it is true that the fuel um can be better now, and so the trains themselves go a little faster and accelerate a lot faster. The acceleration is the big one that's changed. But that only slightly increases throughput, like probably not even by 50%, I guess, compared to old throughputs. Elevated rails probably did more for trains than anything else, just because intersections can have higher throughputs now. But all that being said, that just means more trains are flying around. It doesn't actually, it just feels weird that given the increased um, SPM of a base and with quality affecting buildings and modules and all that, like you can get way more items now than you could before really easily. It feels weird that trains can't fit any more items. So I knock, I knock cargo wagons down a notch for that. <laughs> trains get a bump because they're one of the few items that kills the engineer. Yeah. Yeah, also that, Glim, space platforms. You know, now it's kind of weird, though, because it's like, well, space platforms don't reduce the need for trains. They just decided to take the game in a direction where the expansion of your factory, and by that I mean literally your entire save, your playthrough, your playthrough now expands to other planets rather than far locations on Navis, right? They could have taken the expansion of the game in a different direction where you're still on one planet, or even you use space to get to other section. You know, there there are ways they could have done it that trains would have been more significant. But now most of your expansion is up into space and then to the other planets and then down. And you don't need trains for that part. So you really don't need trains anywhere where you didn't need trains before. Like their usefulness has not increased. And as we've talked about, yeah, exactly, Dave, because of um, bots and rockets and belt stacking trains are actually worse relatively in space age than they were before they're still dope though <laughs> um, and yeah game biter that's true the one thing that's important to note though is you still only have one cargo pad on each planet so you still need a giant train network to move items around on that planet once you go more mega base. But the problem is you don't need more mega with your base because you can just do legendary quality buildings and beacons and modules. And now all of the green circuits you could ever need are made from three electromagnetic plants or whatever. And so I, I think I think what quality has done is it's densified your base so much. It just it's it's made me sad a little bit. I don't know how else to say it. Um, I think there's a little bit of that that has made things less good and less fun. And I don't really, I talked about this a little bit in my, in my review of the game, which is up on YouTube now. I just, I think there were a few things about quality, or I think there are a few things about quality that have made the game lesser in some ways and I don't know how else to to say it it's just like ah I don't know if that is going to be good forever it's really fun there like the funness of it feels really high but at the same time it feels like the fun of having a cheat code on rather than the fun of this is really good design that I think will always play well and it's made the game more fun in all circumstances. I think it's more of the fun of like, oh, this is really fun that I can make a hundred circuits in one electromagnetic plant per second. But then I think once the initial fun of that wears off, it'll actually be like, oh, I don't know if being able to do this is actually good. I'm still not sure, there, there's still a lot I don't 
I haven't fully formed my opinions on, but anyway, that's a tangent. We need to keep ranking things. Of all games that have trains, Factorio's feel among the best. I do agree with that. Uh, trains, in fact, it, it, any other game, I'm measuring the trains against Factorio trains. Um, elevated rails are interesting. This kind of is almost like quality in some ways. Actually, no, I, I no, it's not. Because the, I don't think they have the same downsides that quality sort of does or might. Um, but they're also unnecessary. I think I think elevated rails are interesting because people were clamoring for them. But at the end of the day, like the actual throughput of intersections was already very high w with proper signaling and good intersection design. And so they're not really necessary. And given the distance that you can actually put these apart, it's not like you can fit a huge factory underneath them. And the biggest issue is with that is that if that's what they wanted you to be able to do, I don't think that's really how they were designing it gameplay wise, because if their goal was like, oh, you can put trains up here and your factory down here, they would have made it easier to be able to see your factory through the rails. Like there's no transparency setting where you both they turn invisible and you can click through them. And that feels really weird. I'm hoping they add that in. So I, I knock them down to B for that reason, but they are really freaking cool. And I like that you can design um, intersectionless intersections. So that is really sweet. Obviously they're necessary in quotes for Fulgora, but you could have just designed Fulgora in such a way that you could build rails between the islands, just regular rails, but not other buildings. They could have just done that and that would have had effect, the same effect. So I don't really think the elevated on a platform is much more than like a, a cool graphics thing on Fulgora between the islands than anything else. Cause it's not like you're going over any buildings. So it's just a cool like what I what I'm getting at is they could have made it so that the regular rails changed graphics to look like elevated rails when building them over the oil oceans, but not actually have them be separate entities like they could have done that right and never added elevated rails to the game at all. So so clearly, you know, it that's what I'm getting at. Uh, anyway, pipe pipe is here. Hmm. Pipes are interesting. Pipes are a workhorse. You know, they're kind of like belts, but even even more so because there's not four tiers of them. So like a pipe has to get at least we'll start at B just because their usefulness in terms of time throughout your playthrough is 100% of the playthrough. Unlike belts, which cycle through to other types. Um. The rush factor is zero. You just have them from the beginning. Quality effects are terrible. They only get more health. Uh, they are easy to use. Unique factors, they're the only thing that move fluids. The graphics are good. Um, 2.0 changed pipes, uh, flow rates and stuff. I think they deserve an A. I think they deserve an A. I do, I do agree, Dave. Uh, yeah, undergrounds are lower because they're not advanced fluid handling undergrounds. I do wish you could have better control of pipes sometimes. It feels... Builds feel unnecessarily large sometimes because of it, but that's fine. That's kind of like the Bob's Inserters conversation all over again, so I'm not going to rehash all that. There are reasons to to have it the way it is, but I also like having more flexible underground connections. Hmm. Pumps. Pumps are kind of the main way that you quality underground pipes should be longer. I actually agree with that. Hmm. Pumps basically are valves. Glim. So that's kind of they're they're taking that role. They're the only way you can control fluids. They are the splitter of the fluids. But you have to mix that with logic, which is a little bit of a downside for the for the average player, you know, that isn't into circuits and logic and stuff. 
Um, at this point, I'm so used to it that it feels kind of second nature to just plop down a tank and be like, oh, this will run when it's less than 5,000. And then I add another one and that'll run when it's greater than 8,000. And then you've got this prioritized list of fluids and stuff. But like that takes a lot of practice and experience to to feel like pumps are that easy. So they might get a little bit of a knock because they're they're not as uh, clear as splitters. I wish I wish fluids had mechanics that felt similarly simple to splitters. So I'll give I'll give them an A though, because pumps are really important. They're really I think they're really well done. They're fast. They do what you want them to do. You use them throughout the whole game. Quality makes them faster if you need faster, though most of the time you don't. Um, <laughs> pumps are C because they take engines. That is annoying, but I find that by the time I need a pump, I can just throw a couple ingredients in an assembler and make a couple engines. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Maria. Usually I have all the things I need for engines on my person though, so I plop an assembler wherever I'm standing, I set it to engines, I control click my inventory, I let it make two engines, I tear the whole thing down, and then I handcraft two pumps. That's usually how I do it, and it, it works. Uh, yes, Alor, quality pumps are faster. Okay, so let's, let's move all this tile stuff to the left and do a little bit of sort. Oh, uh, fluid wagons. I'm actually gonna put those lower than wagons. Fluid wagons are pretty meh because you can so easily with the new pipe mechanics pump stuff over very long distances. Yes, I realize it's still capped to 250 or whatever, but the only thing you need to do every 250 units is place one pump or three pumps if you need more throughput or whatever. So I don't really think fluid wagons have quite as high of a usage as regular wagons. Because there are a lot of cases where even in a train network, I'm just going to pipe things rather than put them on a train. Um, lamps. Oh, lamps is another one where I feel like it's F or S. Because on the one hand, I love lamp, right? I love the base to be nice and bright. I don't want to need night vision. I also think it's a shame that they made it so the quality mechanic doesn't make them brighter, like a bigger lamp radius. That feels like an easy win. And I also don't like the new uh, night vision, though they did change it slightly. I haven't checked it out too much, but uh, I think lamps are pretty awesome. I put them everywhere. Yep. Yeah, I, I just think they need to be S. No, they can't be S. I, I can't. I can't set them as S. I'll give them an A. You can set the colors easily and you can have them be always on, which is nice too. They're way easier to configure. All right, green and red wire. So wire gets an S. Uh, the colors are interchangeable. I know you guys want me to rank one higher than the other so we can all fight over it. Uh, so we'll do it that way. And the reason wire is S is because it can do so much, even for the average player. With the new decider combinators and the new hull belt reading, I actually, and the new fluid mechanics even, I think help a little bit because of tanks. I, I just think it's easier to manage fluids now overall. And so I I think wire is an S tier thing in Factorio. The, the simplicity with which you can tell an inserter to only run if the belt has more than 10 of something on it, or you can tell an assembler to only run, yeah, now that you can control assemblers with wires, you can turn on and off requester chests and provider chests with wires. It still baffles me that you can't connect these to the logistics network without using a wire in terms of reading what's in the network, but that's a different topic. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly, Glim. The circuit logic is a whole game on top of the game. It is a force multiplier. So I do think I do think wiring as a concept gets an A plus or S even. The only knock I have is it's kind of frustrating that wires can't be longer. Um, I think some of it's for readability in the game, like they, they want it so that wires 
can't just crisscross all over the place in a way that's really horrible. And that way you need to connect them to a power pole. And then the power pole connection goes with the wire connection. And that works out pretty well. Hey, phase lot. How's it going? Welcome everybody. We are, uh, we're tier listing all the Factorio items right now. So we're having, having a good time. Um, we're just talking about how the circuit connections are one of the best things in the game. And you can do so much more with them even in Space Age than you could before. So easy S tier for wire. And yeah, green's better than red. I default to green. I only use red if I need the second connection. So that's why red is at an A. <laughs> all right, all right, we're, we're moving, we're moving on. We're getting close to done with this tab. What about, what about signals? What about signals? So, also, phase lot. were you playing Factory? What were you up to? Let's see if my shout out bot is still working. Oh, it's not working. It dies like every month and I have to open up Streamlabs again. But what have you been up to? Everyone go go give phase lot a follow. I don't even know what they stream, <laughs> but give them a follow anyway. Um, thank you for the raid. Signals could be S but they could also be F. Uh, well, let me explain. Signals have provided more confusion for most Factorio players than m potentially any other mechanic in the entire game. Because yes, it's true that like circuits are more complicated than signals, but people who don't care about circuits just don't do circuits or they ignore circuits and they don't need to deal with them. Whereas trains are this enticing thing and you really want them to work. But signals break everybody's brain in half. Now, I do think I've actually made some pretty good videos on them if you would like to learn and you don't know yet. I'll, I will shameless plug my own thing. Um, phase lot, you're new to it. Well, well, welcome to fact the factorial world. I hope you enjoy your space age run. Um, but basically, signals are weird because they simultaneously are necessary for your trains to work the way you want them to work. And once you understand signals, they do work pretty easily. Like once you have the right framework in your brain for understanding it, it's not that bad. It, you kind of you you know the rules to place them I, at this point in my I'm not even a train master compared to a lot of people who have played like a lot of people spend more time on trains than I do and they know more about signaling than I do, but I still rarely make mistakes at this point with the signals. So they're not that bad once you get them, but getting to the point where you get them is pretty bad. I spent a long time being really confused on these suckers. I'm gonna put chain signals below regular signals wherever they end up going because they're very confusing and the community tends to not do a good job of explaining them, partially because they're confusing and it's hard to explain confusing things, right? Like it, it's <laughs> the more confusing a thing is, the more different ways people try to explain it because everybody sort of has a different framework in their head for how they get it. But then they try to use words that don't quite match and it, it's a mess. Uh, I do think my, my videos are pretty good. So check them out if you're interested. I have one for regular signals that kind of explains how trains reserving blocks works. And then the chain signals are easier to understand once you kind of have a understanding for how the trains are working in the first place um but basically uh no monotoast that's exactly wrong it's chain signals go into the intersection and then a regular signal at the end of it so that's actually backwards um <laughs> but that being said basically the thing that unlocked my understanding so i'll say it here just because um it's the thing that finally broke through for me because people always would say chain signals copy the signal in front of them. But the problem is, what if you have a path uh, here? Let me draw here for a moment. What if you have a path that's going like this and you've got another rail coming through the middle? And so you've got you've got your your signal here and here or whatever. And you've got a train sitting in this block. You've got a train here. And it's going that way. 
and you've got a, a, a chain signal. Uh, let me make a little blue dot here. You've got a chain signal right here. Let's say it's before the branch. See you later, Phaselot. Totally get it. Thanks for the raid. Catch you later. What color would this signal be? Right? Because if it says it copies the signal in front of it, well, this signal's red because there's a, there's a train in front of it. But this signal is green because there's no train in front of it. And so you can't say it copies the signal in front of it. That's the biggest garbage, unhelpful thing that I've seen copied and pasted. People are mentally copying and pasting it. They're copying and pasting it everywhere. I think it's just become like, well, that's, you know, it's just how trains work. Well, the chain signals copy the signal in front of them. But it's like, but there's multiple signals in front of them because paths can branch. And so the thing that people need to say is that a chain signal will copy the signals in front of it on the path that the train is wanting to go. Like it's kind of simultaneously looking at all the possible paths it could take. And it's, so then the chain signal is looking at this path and therefore it's saying this path is red. So that path doesn't exist to the train. And then it's looking at this other path and it's seeing that this signal's green. So it's saying this path exists for the train and this path over here does not exist. And so if the train is wanting to go this way, then the train will because that path is green. If the train was needing to go this way, maybe because that's the only way to get where it's going, then it will stop at the chain signal because that path is red. So essentially it turns every single separate path into its own green or red, depending on where the train is actually wanting to go. And it will cause a repath if the train was wanting to go this way, but then it gets here and this is red for that path, it will then go this way instead. So the trains are smart enough to choose a new path if the old one is blocked, but the one of the potential paths is still open. So that's my really short uh, chain signal primer. I'm not gonna talk more about it, even though I could. I have videos for that. <laughs> uh, sorry for the, yeah, exactly. You didn't, you didn't have a train interlude on your bingo card, but here we are. All right, back to tier listing. Uh, for that reason, I think chain signals get a D. They're massively necessary and useful, but they're very confusing. And uh, I think that's, Part of the the difficulty of them and i don't really have a solution for it i don't know how wuba could make chains more intuitive i believe they could i believe there's a there's room for improvement um but but i don't yeah they're they're getting dragged down by the the public issues with them so game biter uh, it depends is the answer. If a path is blocked, it adds um, negative value to the distance. Basically, like if it's blocked by a train, it adds like a thousand or 10,000 or something. So there is a certain distance where it wouldn't take the alternative path because the blocked path is still a lower number. It's basically just turning it all into numbers. All right, rails. <laughs> I was looking for the other rail. There are no curved rails anymore. Um, rails get a C. They do what you need them to do. They look they look nice. Uh, the new angles though, maybe they go up to B because having the new angles is dope. I will say I wish the train auto placer, are we grading that together with the rails? That's the question, you know. We're, unique factors to that item, I feel like we're kind of including the mechanics around the items rather than the item itself. So, you know take that with a grain of salt but i think the new rail planner is actually kind of annoying more annoying than it used to be because of all the new angles i wish there were two different modes i wish you could have a mode that defaults to right angles and vertical and horizontal rails and i like that there is the mode that's like hey wiggle your way around the world however you can to make this fit um i really wish there was both because the new wiggle world is kind of annoying because you have to really play with it to even get it to go in a straight line anymore. So it's kind of like uh, Satisfactory has the straight mode for belts. We kind of need a straight mode and a straight corner mode for rails, I think. Um, no way elevated rail is higher than rail. That's a good point. 
That's a good point. Hmm, how do I do this? Why did I have elevated rail at B after I said it wasn't even really that necessary? Is it just for the coolness factor? I think it's just for the coolness factor. I have it up here. Yeah, it's a vibe check thing. It's a vibe check thing. The train planner's running out of modifier keys. Uh, Multar, do I happen to have a good video or can help explain logistics trains where one train can be called to multiple supply depots? Uh, unfortunately, no. I haven't played enough with the train interrupts yet to understand at a core level how to do it yet. So I don't have any guide videos on that. <laughs> exactly, Maria. I did kind of ignore it in my playthrough, so I need to, I need to play with it. Uh, the sound of the train on elevated rails is also A+. Plus. I agree, Dave. Um, the stations. I think the stations have a lot of flexibility to them, particularly with the new interrupt system. So I'm going to give them a B because they're really cool now. Um, Robo ports get a C. They do what they need to do. I, I have no I have no notes. Um, you know, the bots get an S, but the, I don't think the robo ports do. Um, because otherwise just everything connected to bots would get an S and that's boring. The robo ports themselves, they do have a cool animation. Um, I find, I do find it kind of annoying that they don't have more charging ports. I think the number that you need to place of the robo ports is kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, I think they get a C. I think they get a C. Power switches. There's another easy F for me. What the heck is this entity? I don't think I've ever made one of them. Um, I know some people like them. Again, every item in the game exists for some reason, but for me, power switches get an easy F. You can do power prioritization even uh, without them very easily. So I see no reason they even need to be in the game. Not literally, don't at me. Um, I do understand some of the use cases they have, but I have no need for them. Easy F. Easy F. All right. Uh, storage tank. It does what you need it to do. You can measure it. It's the only thing that can store fluids. So I think it, it gets at least a B. You know, pipes are so integral. I think the whole pipe system needs to have an A just because it's like fluids are cool. I like them. The whole system is pretty important. But I do wish they were smaller. So they get a B. Vibe check. Vibe check drags them down to a B. I wish we had a two by two tank. I wish they were in line sometimes. Just having no configuration options, I think, is why it gets dragged down. The shape is really annoying sometimes. Um, speakers. Ooh, speakers are awesome. Combined with your network, they can inform you of so many things that are going wrong in your base. And I actually think these are the key to having a, a better playthrough is setting up speakers to warn you before things go wrong. Um, things can get really frustrating if a lot of stuff is breaking at once and you can prevent a lot of that by proper uh, alarm setups. So. There you go. Now, cliff explosives. <sighs> okay, I'm I'm torn here. I hate cliffs. Like I really don't like them. Um, I think they're a boring. Oh, well, let me. It's a boring solution, right? Cliff explosives are not interesting in any way. Once you have them, you can now remove cliffs wherever you want to, and you do need to move the cliff explosive to other planets, but. Once you have them, you have them, and cliffs no longer matter. I don't like that the new shift click automatically always destroys cliffs, because sometimes you want to build around the cliffs, like your walls and defenses, and you can't avoid that now. And then on top of that, cliffs are either in the way or they're not. It's a very binary, like, they're either in the way and they're annoying you, and then as soon as you have cliff explosives, they no longer matter ever again or they're not in the way and not annoying you, in which case, why are they even turned on? I do think, yeah, that's where I'm going with this, Alor. The 2.0 changes to cliffs on Nauvis in particular made cliffs a bit more fun because they actually feel like they can be part of your defensive walls. I like that. I don't like cliffs on Fulgora though. I didn't like cliffs on Vulcanus, though they didn't last very long on Vulcanus. So I, I've still found cliffs to be annoying overall. 
And so does that mean cliff explosives get an S because they remove cliffs? Or do cliff explosives get an F because I turn off cliffs? Which is the which is the way, you know? I don't know. It's one of the two. Kind of both. Because <laughs> um, I tend to just turn off cliffs, and I think I will continue to do that. I, I don't love cliffs. Um, once, as soon as I have cliff explosives, I'm just flattening all the cliffs I, I get anywhere near. And that just feels like a really boring mechanic to me. And, and there's not... Building around them, I think, is less fun than it is... Or what am I saying? It, it's more feel bads than feel goods. Yes, it is cool when a factory is like organically built around a cliff. I think it looks neat, but the pain of building around the cliff organically introduces more spaghetti. I already have enough spaghetti. I don't need more introduced. I, I don't know. I'm going to give him an F because cliffs are an F for me. There's my there's my take. All right. Now all of the brick type things. So landfill gets a c solid workhorse of the base it does what you need it to do um are we rating cliffs or cliff explosives that's a good point i hate cliffs so the explosives get an s again i just like ah but they're also an f because if you turn off cliff explosives you don't or if you turn off cliffs you don't need any cliff explosives and you never craft them and they're useless so i don't know which I don't know which way to go. We need a, an SF category. Um, you wish landfill was cheaper? Yeah, it's a little expensive, especially in the early game. But at the same time, it's fine with the new the new big drills making patches kind of infinite anyway. I feel like you can just make a huge landfill production now pretty easily. Um. Mm -hmm. Foundation gets an S, even though I never made it, because you can pave the world and build over the oil oceans and build over the lava and build over anything, and I like that, just conceptually. It's kind of the opposite of cliffs, right? It's the antithesis. It's the anclyphosis, uh, and I like it. Now, for these other things, I think this is just landfill on Aquilo. That's fine, kind of C-block style. I like that. Um, hazard concrete is only there for visual decoration. I respect what other people can do with it, but I never use it, so I'll put it in the D category. And I think, I think our items here, I think the, the stone brick goes up to a B because it's cheap and easy to make a lot of it without too much work. The other two are kind of complex recipes. They're kind of a pain to make a lot of in the earlier game when you really want them because you don't have exoskeletons. And this is the issue I think I've run into is that the exoskeletons are so much of a bigger bonus than the concrete that it kind of feels like by the time you can make lots of these concretes, you already have exoskeletons. You're already walking fast enough. You don't need more move speed. So from a move speed perspective, these are kind of meh. From a paving the world and making it look cool perspective, that's pretty great. Um, so maybe they go up to B for that. And stone goes up to an A. Cause I do like, I do like the art. I like, I mean, it's fun, you know, having the name redemptions in, in my streams and stuff. I like being able to, to have pathways. Um, I think all the coolest factories I've seen online and stuff have concrete that is placed in a way that is artistic. It's not just like the whole world is concrete, but people have like squares of concrete or the two different types of concrete to provide a contrast. Like there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with it. So I, I think for from a graphics sense, I'll bring it up to B. From a gameplay sense, it's more of a C because I just tend not to feel the need for it at all. Concrete is kind of cheaper than bricks. Yeah, but it's a really slow recipe and you have to put iron ore in a place that you generally don't need to put it. Eh. All right, we did it. We did it. It only took two hours for one tab. Oh God. Um, but we did it. We tier listed the logistics tab. Um, <laughs> so yeah, 
This is where we're at. What got S? Do I do I need to change anything? We only had a few things in S tier. I think that's good. We shouldn't have a ton of things. Does this really belong in S tier? I didn't even use it. Um, I think it does though. From a conceptually, no, no, it's just A. It doesn't. It doesn't belong in S. Um. All right. All the F tier stuff I stand by. Um, again, most things get C tier just by default. So like C is, I think some people see C and they think, oh, I wouldn't want to get that grade on my test. So that's a bad rank, but that's just the default rank. So that's fine. Anything in B had a reason to drag it up to B. I, I stand by that. A had two reasons to drag it up and I stand by those. Yeah, I, I, I like these rankings. Long inserter, long inserter had some very um, emotional reasons that it. <laughs> I was biased. I don't. I don't think long inserters should be a separate entity. I think all inserters should be able to be longified. I think that would be more fun. Uh, again, that is an opinion, but that is my opinion, and so that's why long inserters get an F. It's me taking a stand. Did we take into consideration the costs? Um, None of these are really things where the cost tends to be that big of a consideration on whether you make it or not. Except maybe the Spider-Tron, that's true. But most things, if you need them, you make them. Or if you want them, you make them. And if you don't, you don't. I, I think, And I think that's true of most items in Factorio. The cost itself rarely is a huge influence. It's more a question of do you complain about it or not <laughs> once you're making it. Yeah, everything is kind of cheap at the end of the day to some level. Um, the other tabs, we might have some other thoughts on cost, but with this tab, most of, yeah, exactly. Most of these things are kind of core items that you need. Um, like if you're going to use it, you're going to use it and you need to make it. And the cost is almost irrelevant to where we grade it, but Spider-Trons are kind of expensive. Tanks are kind of expensive if you're making a lot of them, but you know, rolling for rare tanks, like somebody was in their playthrough. Elevated rails are really freaking expensive. That's a good point. I almost feel like we should drag them down to C for that. They're like annoyingly expensive. Hmm. I don't know. I think for the cool factor, I'll let them. I'll let them stay in B, but I'll, I'll say they're B minus. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to be it for this uh, YouTube recording. I'm going to keep streaming those. So those of you that are here live, stick around. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we will work on the automation uh, in the coming minutes here. But for those of you from future YouTube recording land, as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I got so horribly wrong. Uh, just be nice in the comments and we'll chat uh, in the next one. <laughs>